folks, I'm Tom Vassell and welcome to the History of the Dice Tower. Now we are in the year 2009. It's almost 10 years ago and uh, in this year I, some major changes came to the Dice Tower. Now in 2008 I started up the video thing and it kind of exploded. It went a lot farther than I would be. I kind of started as a lark just turning on my laptop computer and recording stuff and it just really went well. In fact early 2009 I did a review of Dominion which is still one of my highest watched reviews of all time. Not very good review at this point in time but still and I had started a, a vlog series which kind of went to petered out at the beginning of 2009. Now, the whole vlog thing wasn't really coming and said so I was trying to figure out where is the future. See that's the thing with the Dice Tower I'm always saying what's the future going to be but we're not sure. YouTube wasn't this huge thing in 2009. It was a big deal but it wasn't huge. So I was thinking is it YouTube? I started posting my videos simultaneously to Vimeo too which is still around but nothing really compared to YouTube now. And I started getting rid of board games at this point in time too. The culling games. I, I took people on a tour of the game room. My, my game room was a very different uh, experience than it is now. Now I have like 350. Back then I had well over a thousand and my system for gaming a little similar to what it was now. But I had a, just a com almost a completely different game collection at that point in time. Now Ruby was born, my sixth daughter. And so now I had six, six kids, which, which is a lot. And, you know, the whole video reviewing thing was a lot of fun and I was doing it, but it was keeping me busy. At this point in time, I was a full-time pastor of Weijin Bu Baptist Church in Korea. And I was also a part-time teacher um, at the school there. We're teaching high school math. And I had the kids. And so things kept me busy. But I was still wanting to do different things. That year, I went to Origins because at this point, Origins was still the only convention I could really go to. It was the one during the summer, the, during my time off that I could go to. And I remember going there and being on a podcasting panel that was there. Now, this was a, kind of a, a unique thing. And we're going to come back to this Origins podcasting panel. But something major happened fairly shortly before Origins. When Melody was born, uh, a couple years, when she was a couple years old, Melody had uh, a seizure, which scared me and Laura to half the bits. We rushed her to the hospital, and they said it was fine. It was a febrile seizure. She started getting these seizures, and she had them various points, and then they went away by the time she was four. They say one out of 25 kids gets these. They're not harmful. We learn how to do it, cool the kid down and everything. Well, my fifth daughter, Clara, had this seizure happen to her. And we were like, oh, seizure. We know exactly what to do because we dealt with this with Melody. Except she didn't come out of her seizure. She was in her seizure for 10 minutes or such. And we raced her to the hospital as fast as we could. And she was in a seizure and wouldn't come out of it. They finally sedated her to the point where eventually she came out of it. But when she came out of the seizure, she didn't recognize us. We had a hard thing, and eventually um, she, they sent her home, and she was responsive again, but there was something a little off now. She was, she was a very, very bright, bright little child, and that brightness seemed to be gone, and she started having seizures more often. And so we really, this was something that like started weighing on us, like we did not know what to do. South Korea has very, very good hospitals, but the doctors did not know what the problem was. So this happened in June 4th of 2009. At the same time, at the very beginning of 2009, Sam decided that his time in Korea was up and he was going to take him and his family back and he looked for different jobs and found a job um, working in a church in California and so he was going to be heading out the same time that all this went down with Clara in June. So he and his family went and this I now am suddenly looking for a new co-host because I knew that when Sam landed, he was going to be reconfiguring and doing things and would be very busy taking care of his family. And so I wanted to find a co-host, someone that I could work with on the Dice Tower. And, you know, it's kind of funny because if I was doing this now, I might say, oh, there's all these names. But at the time, I was like, I don't know anyone at all, really. And it came to my mind, Eric Summer. Now, Eric Summer had already been doing voice work for us on the Dice Tower. He was doing our intros and our outros. He had done 72 second reviews where he reviewed a game very quickly. And I really liked that idea of bringing Eric 
on board more. And I was like, well, I don't really know Eric that well, just our emails back and forth, but I thought it could be something that we could do. So I emailed him, asked him, and he was like, let me think about it, yes. It was, it was pretty much that quickly. And so we started talking about this and preparing for this. And when Sam left, I didn't do Eric right away. We didn't jump into that. I did a few episodes with Ben Forgard, who was a friend of mine who lived in Korea. And we did a couple episodes. And then I went to Origins, coming back around to Origins for the first time. Now I met Eric for, for the first time. And we went on that podcasting panel. Now, going on that podcasting panel, I distinctly remember that podcasting panel because we, me and Eric went there, and we were probably the most well-known podcasters on that panel. But there were many other podcasters there. Uh, there was the, the folks from the Spiel were there. There was Cody and John from Game On with Cody and John, and there were several other people. And some of them were part of a network, the Pulp Gaming Network. Now, this network no longer exists, but Eric and I, we went there, and we felt kind of odd because it felt like everyone on this panel was from this network and here we were and we felt there was a lot of people there and it was kind of an interesting thing and we just said huh a network is this something we want to be involved with and i said well what good does a network do why would we want to be part of a network and i kind of put it out of our mind but not completely it was still there so i went back to korea after origins a very fun successful origins and Claire was still having problems. In fact, at one point, she just went to the hospital because she was in a seizure for a really long period of time. And her seizures seemed to get worse. The doctors would prescribe medicine, and that medicine slowed down the seizures, but she still was having them. And also, she was having blank seizures where she might be walking, and all of a sudden, you could see her eyes, just everything would disappear. And this started to worry me some, and then think about it, and I, you know, well, how, how can this be done? But life goes on, and we still worked with the Dice Tower, still trying new things out. I did the top 100 list again and brought Melody on board with this top 100. And Melody just seemed to fit on camera. She really liked doing it. Uh, this was, again, years ago. You can see her now. She does a much better job than at the beginning, but she was very enthusiastic about it. But I also started thinking, well, the channel could be more robust if it wasn't just me. So I brought on Melody. Well, Joe Stebbin, my first co-host of Dice Tower, had been contacting me about being involved. So he started doing a few reviews for the Dice Tower of the bigger war games, the ones that I probably wouldn't touch, and doing those on the show. So now I have me and Melody and Joe, we're doing the, the Dice Tower video, and Eric coming on to the podcast. And Eric and I, there might have been a s small fumbling at the beginning, but we really fit together hand in glove. And you know, it just really, it came together very quickly. Um, I decided that we were going to, you know, keep the podcast kind of the same as when Sam and I did it, just the exception of me and Eric. We would record via Skype, so I'd record at my place, he recorded his, and then Eric would help with the editing, which was a huge change for me, because up to that point, when I record with Joe and Sam, we would record, and I'd go and edit it for a while. Here, now, they were helping with the editing, which really helped out a lot, Eric did. And so I added new segments and new people on, but at some point, I said, here we are, we've been in Korea for nine years, and I want to do something different. I wanted to work with children. I was the full-time head pastor of our church, but I didn't necessarily want to be the full head-time pastor. I wanted to be someone who worked with kids at church, and you can't really like go from being the full-time pastor to a lower pastor. That doesn't work very well. Not to mention the thing with Clara was really, really weighing on me. And I knew that even though South Korea's fantastic doctors, America might have something that could do it. And it had been a while since we had been back to America. And I was like, you know, maybe it's time to go home for a bit. So after a lot of thinking and a lot of discussion, mostly with my wife, we decided to leave Korea. So we announced it near the end of the year. And also in the same time frame. We had another trip that we were taking. We, me and my wife were going to go to Germany, and I said, why don't we hit Essen up? I've never been to the Essen Game Fair. This is a once-in-a-lifetime. I'll probably never go to Essen again. So we did, and it was a unique experience for us because we went, and some people knew who I was. It wasn't like I walked around, people like Tom Vassell, but a few publishers and designers talked to me. I had a great time. It was very tiring. I'd never been to a convention so crowded and full. I went with Lara, and she was less enthused about just the walking around and looking at things the whole time. Um, but it was a really good experience, and it showed me another side to the industry. I was super excited about going there. 
At the end of 2009, we did our end of the year show, and this is where I brought on other people onto the podcast. I went to other podcasts, and I want to do a big end of the year show. And this is something that I really enjoyed doing, and we have continued doing for ever since, our big end of the year shows. We kind of moved a lot of that to the video side of things. We're on the video now, we're doing a big end of the year show, but we found that people liked this year retrospective thing. And we, I even started doing a podcast of the videos where I would take my videos and put them out as a podcast. It was a very short-lived thing, but I started doing that. So in December, I decided to, to leave, and I remember talking to people, I announced this, and some people started helping us. A few people sent us some donations because to leave Korea was a very expensive process. I had my whole house I had to move. I had to fly everyone back, start life anew. And I had saved some money, and we got some money when we left Korea and things, but people were very helpful. Game on with Cody and John. They were very, very nice, and they even did a support Tom Come Back to America drive. And it was just a lot of people were very helpful. We were very appreciative of the help that we got of the different podcasts, and we had a chance to come back. So in episode 161 of the Dice Tower, I announced we're coming back home in June of 2010. So 2009 was really my last full year in Korea. It was also a time of year where I had at points considered dropping the Dice Tower completely. And then when I was coming back to America, I said, man, I don't know about this Dice Tower thing. Will I still be able to do the Dice Tower and look for another job in America? And by the way, where are we going to go? My parents had lived in Pennsylvania, but they had left Pennsylvania and now lived in Nebraska. And I didn't know that I wanted to go there. My brother and sisters were scattered. I didn't have any strong connections. And I said, all right, we'll go anywhere. But will I even get a job? Tune in next time to see what happens in 2010. One of the biggest changing years of my life probably will be the biggest one until, you know, period. Um, and it's all because of one person. And we'll talk about that next time.